Hello and welcome to our webinar introduction to DocuPerformer. Today we will show you how our software products can make your day-to-day -day work life with SAP systems easier. My name is Malte Haring. Today with me is uh, my colleague Alexander who will support me during this session. Hello everyone. Hi Alex. We will start our today's session with a short overview, introducing our company. The main part will focus on our software tools and in the end, we will give you a little appendix information. Today, we won't go into too many details, but if you are interested in any of our software solutions, there are several videos available on YouTube, which will show you each application in detail. Okay, let's start with our overview. About us, we are an owner-managed software company based in Wiesbaden, existing since 2008. We started the company by a software which was focusing on SAP BI documentation. However, we've come a long way and since then we have developed several software tools which are in general supporting you with your SAP systems. Um, we have a broad customer base which I will show you in the next slide and we are famous for our close collaboration with our customers. We are proud to can say that 50% of the DAX 30 companies in Germany are our customers. Here is a small selection just to say that we have customers uh, coming out of several industries. Let's talk about the components of SAP which we are supporting. As you can see, we are supporting SAP BW, SAP BO, HANA and BPC. For documentation and analysis purposes, we are supporting all four components. Regarding migration and translation, we are supporting BW. Today, we will, be, we will be talking about all four applications. Here is a small overview about our architecture, how our software components are working. Here is to say that all of our software tools in the DocuPerformer are based on the SQL database, and they have an application interface to each of your SAP systems, meaning to SAP BW, BO, and HANA. We are synchronizing with these SAP systems and saving the metadata of all related objects into the SQL database below. This providing the possibility to do documentation and analysis on these entities. The output of our software is usually in very different formats. So you can create documentations as Word files, Excel files, PDF files, and also PowerPoint. The analysis results can be seen straight away in the application itself, as you will see soon. Okay, this is all about the overview. Let's start with our documentation tool. What is it about? In general, it's about creating technical documents for your objects in BW, BO or HANA. You all know that documentation can be quite annoying and there are additional reasons why documentation is necessary. Just take as an example that you have consultants in your company who are modeling and data models. And as soon as they've finished their work, the data model is given to another responsible person. How does this person know how the data model in general was developed and how it is working? Documentation can help in this case to understand the full picture of the data model. What is the difficulty about documentation? Well, there are no SAP standards, so SAP is not offering a standard solution how to create these documents. They are very time consuming. If you ever created a documentation, you will know that it, it takes a lot of time creating these documents, the format in the documents, and to collect all the information necessary to have a complete picture. Furthermore, they're very bad in comparison. Imagine, for example, that several persons are creating documentations in, the, in your company and each of this person have their individual style of creating documents. This way, you will never be able to compare these documentations. And our solution is addressing these issues very specifically. How? This I will show you now in a short live demo. Okay, so let's go to the DocuPerformer, which I've already opened here. On the bottom left, you can see that I'm already connected to one of our BW systems. Okay, in the main screen, you will have the possibilities to select any SAP entities which you would like to search. 
The synchronization to the Docu Performer with our BW already happened, so I have all the entities available which I have in my BW system. Now I would like to show you how easy it can be to make a documentation for one of our queries. I can use the grid here and the filter line to search for my specific query, either by technical name or by description. Let's do so. Here it is. This is the query I would like to document. Before I do so, I would like to show you our comment feature. So I'm able to create comments for each of our objects. As you can see now on the right side of the screen, um, there are already some comments which were maintained by some of my colleagues. I would like to enhance this comment now so I can scroll through the sections and there is, for example, a section target groups, which I would like to edit. Therefore, I click edit and the, the text editor opens. And here I can easily type in the target group is, for example, whatever. As you can see, it's quite easy to maintain text. You can save this comment and this comment is now centrally saved and visible for all other DocuPerformer users. Okay. This is our comment function. How does the actual technical documentation look like? In this case, I can easily open the context menu of my object and I can go to create documentation. In this case, I would like to create a word file. So I'm selecting word file. The DocuPerformer now is collecting all the necessary technical information regarding this query. This sometimes can take a while, depending on how much information you want to extract. I will get to this later on. So the document performer now finished creation, uh, the creation of the document and I can open it straight away. And here you can see already a nice document with a content, table of contents which was automatically created and all the chapters which are describing different aspects of the query itself. You can also see that the comment which we created and enhanced before is part of the documentation. What you also can see now is the technical settings. So you can see general properties of the query, you can see which variables are used in the query, and you can see calculated key figures, restricted key figures, filters, and so on. And this just by doing one click. Okay, let's close it for now. Let's go back to the presentation. Here we go. Okay, so now you've seen how you can create technical documentations of a single object and how you can comment on such an object. But sometimes the purpose in the business is, okay, you don't want to document a single object, you would rather document a whole data model or for example, a project, which usually contains multiple objects. Our answer to this question are scenarios. So we introduce scenarios to be able to document the bundle of objects which you use for your data model. So the content of the scenarios can be different things. First of all, you can have the technical documentation of your objects. You can have your individual comments of the objects, but you can also create individual passages with pictures and so on. And uh, recently also possible you can add Word documentation of other documentation you have already available. An additional advantage of scenarios is that you can address them to different persons in your business. Imagine, for example, that the documentation is supposed to be for someone working in IT who has the deeper insight about technical information of the objects. In this case, you prefer that the technical documentation is quite detailed. In the other case, you have the business counterpart. Those people are usually not very interested in technical information. So you would like to reduce your documentation regarding some specifics. You are also able to configure in which language the creation of the document should happen. We are calling this settings variants, um, and those settings variants are allowing you to set up the specifics of how detailed your technical documentation should be. Before I continue, I would like to show you how this scenario should look like. Here we go, back to Docker Performer again. Let me show you what a scenario could be used for. 
In this case, for example, I would like to create a key figure catalog. If you're working with BW, you might be familiar that sometimes there's a request to create such a key figure catalog. And I would like to show you how fast you can do this with the document. You can see here my scenario consisting of different structure elements. For example, an introduction. We have a composite provider already in here. We have different chapters which are supposed to contain the key figures later on. And we have a variable already assigned. This scenario is not yet filled with key figures. And I would like to show you how you can add objects to a scenario. Therefore, I'm closing the scenario. I'm going back to my entity grid. Here I have a tab called Relations. And now I'm searching for my composite provider where all the key figures I would like to document are in. And I'm searching for this. Okay, here it is. And as soon as I select it, you will see on the bottom that the DocuPerformer automatically um, selects all the key figures available in the composite provider. I can simply select all of them and by a context menu, I can assign them to a scenario. Now I have to search for the scenario I was creating, which is this one. And I click assign to assign my key figures. Okay, that's done. Let's open the scenario again to see what happens. On the right side, you can already see that key figures were added. But let's open the scenario one more time to see if that actually happened. And now you can see the chapters of my scenario are already filled with these key figures. As soon as I export the scenario into a document, you will see that all the technical information regarding these key figures and also their contained comments are summed up in, in one single document. To show you how a document can look like, I'm opening this now in Word. Okay, key figure catalog EPM document. You can see there's already a nice layout, which we force by, by word templates, which you can assign. You have again, a very nice table of contents, which was created automatically with all the key figures. You can see that there are some text element and pictures, which you can individually add to your documentation. And now the technical information. First of all, an automatically created entity list, which is showing you again, which BW objects were added to the document and then you get into the detailed view. For each key figure, you have now the detailed technical information. And this is how fast you can create documentation and like key figure catalogs with just a few clicks. Okay, let's go back to the presentation one more time. Now we can also talk about automation. Sometimes you would require that these documents are up to date. To have this available, you need to create these documents on a regular basis. And therefore, we are offering our automation tool. The automation tool takes care of creating documents out of scenarios which you selected on a daily basis, for example. So you can configure, I want scenario one as a Word file with a certain setting variant on a daily basis at 2 a.m. to be created in a given directory. Those, you give access to this directory to different business users, and they are always up to date. Okay, that's all about documentation. Let's talk about analysis. Our analysis tool is offering a bright variety of functionalities to analyze your SAP systems. This can have different reasons. For example, if you simply want to get an overview of an application, for example, a data model, we offer a data flow analysis or object analysis. If you want to perform impact the mapping analysis, we, offering, we are offering where used analysis and info object mapping analysis. And if it's just about housekeeping, you want to keep your system clean, we are offering several functionalities here as well. Let me show you a couple of them. Let's start with getting an overview. As I already said, we are offering data flow analysis. This not only for certain objects, but for other uh, a whole list of objects. As you can see, we are offering it for old objects like multi-providers, InfoCubes, and so on, but also for the new BW for HANA objects like composite providers and ADSOs. You can create this data flow by simply using the context menu and selecting the option display data flow, as I will show you soon in the system. 
The outcome is very nice. It's like a huge overview of the whole data model which was created. So if you want to get into it, this might be a good starting point. This is, of course, not only offered for BW, but also for HANA. Imagine, for example, you have a calculation views. The data model in HANA can be quite complex because calculation views can contain other calculation views. So here we are also offering to, to have a complete picture by analyzing data flows of HANA views. And this is also working for CDS views, for example. Okay, let me show you what else we have and then we will go to the system quite soon. Additionally, we are offering an object analysis. This means, for example, if you have the overview now of your data flow, but you're interested in single objects, we are offering to analyze those as well in their structure. And you can also compare these elements to different systems, for example. This is also working via context menu, which I will show you now. So let's go back to DocuPerformer. Here we are. Let's close the scenario for now and go back to our entity grid. What I would like to show you now is how you can analyze the data flow for a composite provider, for example. Therefore, I use the entity grid again and search for my technical name. Here it is, I found it. Now I use the context menu and simply click on display data flow. What the tool does now, it's collecting all the dependent objects and displaying them in a nice view. To have this view more structured, there are several functionalities available. For example, we are offering, for example, a layered structured view. So you can assign certain objects to a layer. If I activate this now, you can see that the picture gets even more clear. But what you can also do is you can reduce this data flow. Imagine, for example, the case that this is a picture which is giving too much information and you want to focus on a certain part of the data flow. And here we are offering the functionality to exclude certain flows from the complete picture. It's easy as that. Okay, this is the data flow analysis. Let me show you how you can operate on single objects. Therefore, I'm searching for a query, which I would like to analyze in a detailed view. Here my query is. Again, I choose the context menu, go to our analysis, and click on an Analyze Compare. The analysis tool is now showing the detailed structure of the query. Here we are. And it's even in a detail where the depending objects are being described. So if I click, for example, that I want to see all uh, dependent objects, I can click on Expand All. And you will see that even calculated key figures are being dis displayed with detailed information. For example, the formula contained in the calculated key figure. But this is not the only part. You can also compare this query to a situation in a different system. So if you click on compare, you can select the system which you would like to compare to. And now the analysis tool is selecting the same query in the other system and is offering a view for comparison. To set the focus on what is actually different, you can highlight the differences in the color. And here you can see that the red colored objects are not the same. To make it even easier, we offer you parallel scrolling. Okay. Let's go back to our presentation. This is how you could get a first overview with our analysis tool. Now let's talk about impact and mapping analysis. We are offering a variety of functionalities which will help you to understand where, for example, information comes from, from a data source up to the composite provider itself. Additionally, we are offering a data lineage. Data lineage is a functionality which is showing you for each object of an info provider from which source it comes from. If you would like to see more details about this, I can recommend additional YouTube webinar videos which we are providing in our channel. This is how such an analysis can look like. 
Okay, let's talk a little bit about housekeeping. Here again, we offer a variety of functionalities to keep your system clean. For example, you could display all info providers in your BW, which are not used in any data flows. Or you could even show inactive objects or objects, info objects, which are not used at all. This gives you a quick overview of what can be deleted in the system. But what you can also do, you can, for example, select queries or info providers and check when, the, when was the last time they were loaded with data or when was the last time a query was opened by a user. But this is just a small part of our functionalities. Also here, I would like to advise you to check out our YouTube videos to get into further details. Okay, that's it from my side. My colleague Alex will now talk to you about migration and translation. Okay, thanks, Malte. Um, yes, as Walter already mentioned, I will now have to continue with the migration tool. And the migration tool supports you if you are planning the migration to BW on or BW 4 HANA in the near future. So if you like to migrate established applications and bring them into a new namespace, or if you just want to clean up your system and um, yeah, only migrate the relevant data, data models. It's also easy to consolidate some several systems on a new system, and um, it's also possible to copy BW queries to a new target system. Okay, so on the next slide, I would like to talk about our um, general approach. So first of all, on the left side, you can see your old BW objects, so your multi-providers and the info cubes and DSOs and info objects. And in the first step, you have the possibility to import the old objects to your migration project. So the migration tool is structured in different migration projects. So you can create a project and in this project, you can then insert the old entities. After this step, you can also change the namespace. During the export, you can first transform the entities into, into BW for HANA entities. So, for example, you can transform the multi providers into HANA composite provider and the info cubes and this source into RDS source. And also, during the export, it's possible to, to do the renamings automatically via the Excel, via an Excel table, which you can also insert into the project. And then it's possible to rename the objects. And in the last step, you can then export the entities back to your new BW for HANA system. So this is our general approach. And now I would like to show you some screens of our tools. So this is the first step, which I described. So the import possibility on the left side, you can select your entities of a, of a specific system and also the specific object type. You can insert them into the workspace on the right side and then you can click on start import and it's possible to import the object um, and also the dependent objects into the Doku performer at any depth. Yes, so in this step, it's, we will also convert the info cubes data source multi provider to other source and um, other composite provider. And after the import, it's possible to rename also the info objects or to do other adjustments on the imported objects. You can change here the names and afterwards, if you finished all the adjustments and the renaming, it is possible to insert the adjusted objects to the right side, to the workspace. You can select on top the subsystem, the new SAP system in which you like to export the adjusted objects. And you can select the info area on the right side and then you just click on start export. Another important point is that the objects are automatically created and activated in the BW system and during the export. And the migration tool makes sure that the activation is done in a meaningful order. And we also check before the export whether the creation could lead to inconsistencies. Okay, so after this, the next step would be that you copy also the queries. So we offer also a helpful function to avoid this time consuming task. So to rebuild the queries and to save them and to test them also. So you can save a lot of time. We are the migration tool. Um, you can just select the queries, the old queries. You can then select the new, for example, HANA composite provider, and then just copy them on this HANA composite provider. 
We also display in this step all the pending reporting elements of the query, which have a technical name, and you can also do the renaming at this point. Okay, so this was a quick overview regarding the migration tool. I would like to come to the benefits. So first of all, the migration tool accelerates your migration projects and, save, and so you can save up um, and save up to up to 80% of your time. Um, compared to other migration methods, it's a really easy collaboration because you can comment your objects also as Malte showed before and many people can work on the project at the same time. You can also work with the naming convention, as I mentioned before, so you can define your own naming conventions that are checked when objects are created and migrated. Then the next point is intelligent reuse, so we are able to import existing data models. Um, then the automated export, so as, uh, as I mentioned before, you can create more than hundreds of objects and push off a button and copy the most complex queries into your system really easily. And the last point is the error prevention. So it's a big benefit for, from this intelligent, intelligent reuse, especially the queries. So um, if you do it manually, then it's really likely that are also errors occurs. Okay, so the next tool is translations. It's the last tool that we want to present today in this webinar. So first of all, the translation tool is relevant if BW systems are maintained in multiple languages. Then it's a common situation that, that the system grows over the years and becomes more and more complex. And it is difficult to always translate the description of the objects in all relevant languages. And this situation must be really solved when companies get an international focus or if they plan to outsource their development. And then there are many difficulties in SAP. So first of all, the display description depends on the log-on language. So if you have, for example, three languages, you need to do the log-on process three times. The next point is the identification of the first entities with the missing descriptions. And then also, if you identified them, you need also, you need also to check the right place and the right level of the description. So whether it's um, info object specific or info provider specific and so on. And if you do it manually, then it's a high effort because you need to execute the described, this described tasks. So let's check how it looks like in the translation tool itself. So the screenshot shows three info objects, three characteristics. So I inserted three characteristics into this workspace of translations. And then I can see the descriptions and I can also activate multiple languages. So in this case, I activated French and English. A nice feature is the dictionaries. So if you click on this button, you can maintain a dictionary and add translations into this dictionary. And this tr translations will be then proposed to you during this process here. You can also export this dictionary into an Excel file. So then you can translate the descriptions um, outside of the Google Performer and insert them afterwards back into the, the translations tool. This workspace can also be exported, so you can insert a lot of entities into this workspace, and then you can click on this Excel button and, and export it into an Excel file, and you can also do this with this workspace and translate the descriptions and um, insert this Excel file back into translations, as with the dictionary. Okay, if you are finished with the translation of your description, you can just simply click on Update Text in SAP, and then the descriptions will be translated and you have also the possibility to write the, the objects on a transport request. The next screen I would like to show you is the translations of a query. So you can insert also queries into the workspace and another nice feature is that you have the possibility to display the depending elements. So if you click on this button, the depending elements of this query will be loaded and then you see also the descriptions of the depending elements. You can also display the depending elements of info provider. In this step, this is also something that I mentioned before. This is the intelligent function of our translation tool. So we identify the level at which the description was maintained. So in this case, we have info object specific um, descriptions, navigation attribute specific descriptions and so on. This was a little introduction of translations and migrations. So at last, I would like to show you some benefits regarding translations. 
So first of all, it's really comfortable. So it's easy to load the objects into the workspace. Intelligent because of the identification of the right maintained area of description. It's flexible because the Excel export of the content into the workspace is really, really easy. And also the import of the edited Excel to um, translations. Sufficient and simple because you have an intelligent dictionary and it's easy to load the translations into your subsystem and to write them afterwards on your transport request. So you can transport the edited objects also to your productive system. Okay, so at this slide, you can see now all the introduced products and tools. So documentation, analysis, translations, and migration. As Malte already mentioned before, it was a really quick introduction. So if you need more information, check out our YouTube channel. You can find a lot of webinars of, for example, of scenarios, a housekeeping webinar. You can find translations webinars and also a lot of videos of migration. Okay, so let's come to our last point at this webinar, so the appendix. So first I would like to introduce our service. So if you like to test one of our tools, you can, for example, test analysis or documentation for two months. So also you can also test all of the functions or you can test migration or translations for seven days. We yes. provide three major releases per year and also ongoing between, between them our bug fix releases. We are really happy if you also provide your feedback. You can create feature requests. You can also use our help desk to report bugs and we will support you also during the testing phase. We also offer a knowledge base and the user manual and also a lot of other examples that you can download to check the level of detail of our documentations. Yes, so if you want to try it yourself, first of all, you can do an individual webinar. So just inform us and then we can arrange this webinar. So in this web session, we show you then also some functions and we can also, you can also tell us your requirements and then we can show you the functions that might help you. As I mentioned before, you have the possibility to test also all of the functions and we are also really happy if we can present you our functions on site. So if you also see it maybe also on your system during the testing phase. Okay, so just email us if you want to arrange such a testing phase or appointment. Okay, so let's come to the end. So first of all, thanks a lot that you participated in this webinar and we hope we were able to give you a holistic overview of our tools and it would be really nice if we see you again at our future webinars. Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.